Hej det är Grisending och välkommen till Grundkanalen plus mycket mer. Vi blir att snacka om allt mellan himmel och jord som skapar grundens succé och skapar det allra bästa mest rocka liv. Så låt oss hoppa i dagens episode. Hej det är Gris här och välkommen tillbaka till Grundkanalen. Idag så ska du få möta en rådame och då menar jag verkligen rådame. Hon är er bara 30 år. Hon har en lansering bara i dag när intervjuar och så har du en 100.000 dollar på en 24 timmar. I tillägg till att du har en dag nu så har som mål att tjäna 1 miljon dollar på 24 timmar. Så inte bara är er en crazy duktig business dame. Hon är er också mamma till tre och så pitta pitta lite. Hon har så mycket energi. Jeg älskar denna dama. Hon är er en av de de stjärnskuddan här i USA, så du må bara följa. Du kan gå in på grisindig.no/35 och så finna mer ut om Kimra. Men du blir bara och älskar denna dama för hon är er nå det roaste vi har sett här i USA. Så därför så hoppas jag du är er ok med att det är er på engelsk för dama är er amerikaner och hon är er helt rå. Så idag var så god. Här är er Kimra Luna. Thank you so much for being here, Kimra. Well, thank you for having me. Awesome. So you're a mom of three boys. Yes. And a New Yorker now. Yes. How did that happen? So I recently moved to New York because I was traveling here so often. I was living in California and I was just like, you know what? Let's move to Manhattan. And my husband's like, okay, all right, sure, let's go for it. And um, he had never been here before. My husband had never been to New York City. Neither had my kids, uh, but they were excited and they were like, "Oh, we get to go to museums and all this sort of stuff." So I was like, "All right, cool, like let's go." Um, and so we moved here a few months ago, and we've been really enjoying it. And um, the kids are very proud New Yorkers already. So wow. yes, that's great. So well, your story is amazing. You came out of nowhere, it seems like. Yes. And in just a couple of years, you build a million dollar business. Yes. From welfare. Yes. How is that possible? (laughs) Well, I think it was a lot of time commitment, really. Um, I spent so much time, you know, blogging and just really learning. Like, I would learn something and then apply and then learn something and apply. And and I think I just wasn't afraid to get out there. And I think that's what most people, it kind of holds them back is they don't get in front of people and share what their message is. And, and um, for me, it was just, I've... I've never really been a person that's afraid to, you know, be in front of people. I mean, when I was in high school, I had, like, a giant pink mohawk, you know. So, um, for me, when I was just like, this is my skill. I know that I can help people. I'm going to get out there the best that I can. And so, I just I just went for it. And it started in, in the basement or at your Yeah. Camp? I in-laws? was living at my in-laws house. So I lived at my in-laws house for four years. We were on welfare. Um, by the time I had my second son, we had literally no income coming in. Um, finally, um, the universe gave us a break and my husband got a job working for FedEx as a FedEx driver. So um, that was kind of like the first point where I was just like, okay, we're, we're finally off of welfare. We don't have to be on government assistance. Um, but then I became bored and I decided I wanted to get an iMac. I was like, and I didn't even own a computer. So I'm like, okay, like let's get an iMac with our tax return. <laughs> and so we spent all of our money on an iMac. And I started learning everything I could about online. I learned how to put together my first blog. I learned, you know, what's marketing? Oh, what's email list? Like, I started just learning and learning and learning um, from tons of different people online, primarily podcasts, because I had two little ones, and so listening to podcasts all day was easier for me to digest information. So I listened to tons of podcasts, and anything I learned, I would apply. Anything I learned, I'd apply. And and then finally, it all just clicked. Right. So... How does one just only have like a few thousand dollars and you actually had the guts to use that money investing in yourself? Because many yeah. people tell me, oh, as soon as I get there, I will invest in myself. Or as soon as I make, you know, you get clients, I'll you invested before yeah I had zero Um, so I had a pretty popular blog but the blog it just it wasn't my my main passion anymore I was like no I want to really teach people so I decided I'm gonna scratch the blog completely scratch it and start from fresh so I had no list no nothing and you know I was 
I had asked my husband, I said, is there any way we can get like a credit card or something? Like, I really want to like, you know, buy some courses. I really want to invest in connecting with amazing people. And he was just like, okay, you know, very reluctant about it because he, because, you know, we were barely making the bills at that point, you know? And um, so I started investing in myself. I bought all the tools I needed to build my business, like things like lighting kits and all sorts of things like that. And um, then I started investing in Facebook ads because I had learned from watching tons of free webinars that um, Facebook ads were how you got in front of people. So I was like, all right, if I wanna get in front of people, I better just go for it. And uh, that was what I did. I just went all in. So you're not afraid to put yourself out there at all? No. Um, And it's weird because people ask me, like, why are you not afraid? And I just say, because I know that I'm here to serve people and I'm here to help people. And if I'm hiding, how can I help people? I can't help anybody if I'm in hiding. So do you have people that's not that big a fan? I know your fans are like huge fans, but do you have haters? Yeah, I got plenty of haters. Um, yeah, which was kind of surprising for a while. There was actually an, a whole online forum of people that like just hated me. And I was just like, what did I do to you guys? I didn't do anything to anybody. But um, so I have had my fair share of haters. <laughs> um, luckily, um, a lot of the stuff that they would post was like slanderous. And so my lawyer took care of it. But um, it's just really funny that I think even when you're out there helping and serving, there's always going to be people that want to try to bring you down in some sort of way. Um, and, you know, I, I'm pretty tough in general. I have pretty thick skin. There's been a few times where it's hurt, where it's like someone was like your friend and then like, yeah. you know, goes goes and like basically kind of turns against you and you're just like, I was your friend like three days ago and now you, all of a sudden you hate me. Um, and that has happened to me. Um, and I think it's partly because I was able to grow my business so quickly and um, maybe they felt hurt about that or maybe because they weren't going as fast as me. I don't know what it was, but I've had people just all of a sudden just turn on me. It's weird. But how do you deal with that? How do you get back on your horse and start serving again? I just focus on the people I'm serving. I just focus on my email list. I focus on my followers. And I'm just like, how can I help you guys today? And I just keep, keep focusing on that. And, you know, I do get, you know, letters in the mail from people, like, thanking me for things. And so I have a wall in my office where I taped up all the letters and stuff. And so if I have a bunch of haters, I just go and I read the letters um, because that helps remind me, like, why I'm here doing this so that I'm not giving up or letting those haters bring me down because I know I have a much bigger purpose here. How do you know that? I've always known it. (laughs) Um, Since I was very, very young, um, I always knew that I wanted to to help people all around the world. And even when I was in high school, I um, had told the counselor at school and that I just wanted to help people. And they were like, but that's not a job. And I was like, But I want to just help people, you know, like... It must be a job. Yeah, I'll make it a job if I have to. And that's... and So it's really interesting because they kept telling me that wasn't a job. But now, you know, I have a full living doing that, serving people, sharing my knowledge, and, and, you know, giving and being being the best that I can for other people. You have an an amazing crowd. I love your Facebook groups. They are just super fans. Yes. How do you get super fans like that? Yeah, so super fans, I think, I mean, in the online space, there's a lot of people, especially I think over probably the past 10 years, because I started researching like, you know, how marketing has been and all the shifts and changes that have happened. And now it's all about being authentic, being yourself, and just really serving and over delivering all the time. You know, an audience doesn't like it when someone's trying to just be skeezy or trying to fear them into making a purchase and all that stuff I feel is just falling by the wayside because all the people that are being really authentic and genuine with people and just wanting to serve, they are the ones that are rising to the top. Mm-hmm. And um, you can see that pr- pretty clearly in, in the industry. So, um, it, you know, for me, it's just I was really 
willing to just keep giving and keep giving and then hope that it paid off. And it has, and the more I give, the more my audience raves about me. Even people who don't buy my programs or they're the one, they're still sharing, they're still tweeting all my stuff, they're still posting all over Facebook about me, they're still telling their friends about me, they're still t telling their friends to, hey, join this group, that this chick Kimra, she's cool, go join her group. You know, so even though some of those people, not every single person is gonna purchase products from me, that's like not my end goal. My end goal is just to help and inspire as many people as I possibly can. And you do that, I love your group, and they are so helpful. I mean, yes. there's like not, it's not, nobody's afraid of giving. It's like no. not holding back. You guys are just sharing. How yes. do you put them, so we all have our shit in our life. Yeah. Uh, how do you put the, the private part and the authentic part? How do you deal with that? I mean, you don't yeah. put out when you and yeah. your husband are fighting, and I guess you are as anyone else. So yeah. So much? it's one of those things where, the, yeah, they're kind of like a fine balance because a lot of people, they'll say, oh, well, this is like my authentic post, and they'll post all this stuff that's going on wrong in their life. And I'm just like... But what was so authentic about that? Like, there was no lesson learned. And so I always tell people, I'm like, if you have something to share and you do want to be open up a bit or be a little bit vulnerable, make sure there's a lesson in there. You know, what can people take away from that experience? Because sometimes you might be going through a bunch of crap, but... And in the end, there's there's a lesson to learn at the end of it. So um, so there's a kind of a fine balance. There's sometimes a few posts where I'm just like, that was not helpful at all um, for me to read. Um, but I think most people they're kind of figuring it out on their own. Just you know, you could kind of test the waters. You know, if if people are kind of more feeling sorry for you, then it probably wasn't the right type of post. No. But if they're feeling like, wow, that's really inspiring. You know, I went through the same thing and I'm glad you showed your story because now I know I can do it too. Um, that sort of stuff is, is, is much, much better energy, <laughs> I guess you can say. I love that. So what are you teaching your people now? What's the, what's the teaching of Kimura right now? So right now I pri primarily work with people who are growing personal brands or who, you know, like service-based providers, people selling digital online courses. And um, like right now, actually, I have a big launch coming up right now, but um, I ha I'm doing a lot of stuff teaching course creation, teaching like kind of the foundations of branding and what it really is to have a brand. Because most people think a brand is, oh, just like a pretty logo or, you know, a good headline or, or something. Blue hair. Yes, or my blue hair. Um, but it's more than that. It's the experience that the users have. It's like how they feel when they're landing on your website. Are they comfortable there? Do they do they want to, you know, do they feel that you're approachable and they can connect with you? Um, and are you relatable? That's like a really, really huge part of having an online brand. And I think a lot of people who teach branding, they kind of miss out on that. They just showing people, oh, how to make pretty graphics um, or make your site look pretty doesn't necessarily mean the customer experience is what matters. And there's a quote from uh, Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, and he says that your brand is what people say about you when you leave the room. And so I always tell it to my students and say, you know, you have have to recognize that people are saying things even after they leave your website they might be saying things about you and you want them to say like wow that was a great experience yeah. um, rather than just like oh my gosh that person sucks you know yeah. so what would be your number one tip to go about creating your personal brand you went from zero to several million dollars now yes. and in a shorter period of time what do you think is the key what am I great at like what do I do that's really really well and then once you have the answer to that, you think, oh, well, is there a way I can actually make this into a business and make it something where I can serve people or create a product or, or something like that? What's your biggest strengths? Um, my biggest strengths is, um, well, a big one is, you know, creating, creating raving fans. That's probably my number one uh, strength right now. And... Um, so yeah, so I'd say that's my biggest strength. My second would be teaching. Um, I I really pride myself in teaching. I've always enjoyed teaching, even as a, even as a kid, I enjoyed teaching a lot. I was you know the kid where you know if the if the kids didn't understand it from the teacher, then I would explain it, and then the kids would understand it. Wow. So I have a knack for teaching, 
And when I discovered that, um, well, what actually happened was, is I was growing this blog and my blog became really popular. I was getting over a hundred thousand views a month on my blog, which was pretty massive considering I hadn't paid for any advertising. And I was doing this all through using Pinterest. And I was like, man, this social media is like crazy. And I couldn't believe um, how massive it had gotten. And one of my friends was an online marketer and he had had like a really large list. And he was like, I want you to show them how you did this. And he's like, I want you to get on this thing. It's called Google Hangouts. And it was like right when Google Hangouts came out. And I was like, okay. And he's like, can you do it tomorrow? And I was just like, um, all right, sure. So I get on this Google Hangout and I teach everything I know about Pinterest. And at the end, I got so many emails from people. They're just like, you are an amazing teacher, like all this sorts of stuff. And so it was kind of like I discovered what my biggest strength was, which is teaching. And that's wow. still to this day what you know I pride myself in is being a great teacher you know sharing in a way that people understand and and because I mean I have bought tons of online courses and a lot of times they're so basic that people they don't really grasp the concept and so um, that's where I come in and how I believe my brand is different and what's my unique selling proposition yeah. <laughs> like, they, like they say in yeah. marketing my unique selling proposition is that I am a very proud teacher mm -hmm. and I want to want my students to really, really understand the information so that they can have the best results. So when I, I went to your webinars, I love your webinars, but I was surprised that you didn't have all these flashy logos and <laughs> your, I couldn't read your slides, it was just too many words on yeah. it. So you don't do it like the normal way. No, I don't. Um, a lot of people use, yeah, they, they use you know all these flashy slides and I've tried that, I have, and it works great for a lot of people, so you know, I'm definitely not knocking that. Um, but for me, my audience just really kind of likes it where the words are just going across the screen and I'm just talking and, and you know, then I'll stop screen sharing that and I'll hop onto something else and be like, Oh, here's an example of how to do that. And then I hop back. And, um, so I think it's fast paced enough. It's, you know, it's high value. And so, and it's actionable things. Yeah. And I think that's really what matters is they feel like, wow, I know the action steps I can take to go implement this. And most most of my webinars, I'm not even pitching anything on. They're completely free. Yeah. You know, I just like to do them to, to share and give value to my audience because I know down the line someone's going to remember, oh, Kimmer gave me value, yeah. and they're going to recommend me to a friend or tell somebody about me. Definitely. I told the whole world about you. <laughs> but, but you had this free mastermind where just New Yorkers came together and helped each other, and you facilitated that. Mm -hmm. That was amazing, and I copied that strategy and did another one in Norway for just doing that, and it was amazing. I had so many good friends coming, and mm -hmm. that was just and for yeah. free. And people were like, oh, I can't believe it's for free. And I'm like, it gave me so much pleasure. To yeah. And that's one of the things about me is I get a lot of joy in helping people gather and connect. And I really like to be a connector, a, yeah. a person that helps people collaborate. And I'm like, oh, you need that person? Oh, I know the person for that. And and I really enjoy that. And I think a lot of people really enjoy that too. And I think people don't realize that it's a very strong gift to be a person who can connect people and help and, and collaborate. And, and I just love that stuff. I love any, anybody that's a connector, a collaborator. I love all that stuff. I love that about you. So thank you for that tip. And it's just, people ask me, why do you do that for free when you can charge? Would you like to answer that? Why do you do that for free when you can charge? Well, I get, I do get asked that a lot because I do a lot of free events, um, or very, very low price events. And, you know, I say, it's really just about the connection. Mm. Um, to me, people coming to the event, yeah, maybe some of them might end up being customers down the line, but honestly, sometimes not. It real the thing that really matters is just me being able to give because that's all I want to do is just give. Um, you know, like the the love languages, the, yeah. the yeah. book. Um, mine is giving, yeah. like gifts. So yeah. and and so in both ways. So I love giving and getting and get, like I love just the give. Oh, That's I like my, that. it's like a big thing for me. It's just like give. It's just like I just need to like have it tattooed across my forehead. Uh, like give. Um, but it's just something I really really enjoy doing. And I think people think like oh like you should charge like you know five hundred dollars for that or a thousand dollars for that. And you know for me it's just like I just want to be around people. Like to me it's just a party. It's just fun. So I don't feel like I'm working. You know so so that's part of the reason why I do it for free. Is I don't feel like I'm working. 
Amazing. So you are having a big launch right now. Yes. Your family just starting, you know, moving to New York. Yes. You have a huge launch and a birthday party coming up. And <laughs> yes. I was like, and three kids. Yes. Like, tiny kids yes how do you do it all I just don't get it yeah well now I have a team helping me I have a nanny and I have you know assistants and things like that but before I didn't have that you know I was my husband worked 10 hours a day so anything I did for my business I had to do in the evenings or on weekends and so Saturdays were like my hardcore day of like working and my husband would just take the kids out of the house they'd go to the park four hours and I would just you know be at home and just work 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 um but now I do have a team helping me. I have about 14 team members now total, so with designers and all sorts of stuff. So um, my team just, it just grew. As my business grew, my team has grown. And um, right now during my launch, my kids are just like, don't talk to mommy right now. <laughs> you know, like, we'll hang out with mommy and, you know, next, week. Week, <laughs> next week and stuff, you know, simmer down a little bit. Um, but, you know, after that, then I, I just have so much freedom. You know, it's yeah. like I have it where if I just want to take the day off, I just take the day off and just mm -hmm. hang out with the kids and we just go to the movies or do whatever we want. And, you know, I'm grateful that I have a business where I'm able to do that, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I mean, I had a baby in April and I, I, I took, it's... I took like basically three months off. I just did being a mom, you wow. know, and most people aren't able to do that. And because of the business I have and the structure I've built, I'm able to do things like that when I need to. Mm -hmm. You know, if I needed to take like a month off, I could be like, hey, I need to take a month off. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, my team now can can help run things and facilitate things for me. So it's um, it's just a very it's very different than what I used to live like. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm just so grateful for it every day. Wow. So what has been your hardest business experience? I mean, three years into business, what has been the hardest part? The hardest part. Or your biggest learning? I mean, I guess biggest learning lesson would be don't be afraid to keep giving because I get criticized so much for it. They're just like, you give away too much and you share too much and you know, I, I just had to keep being myself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I first started, I kind of would hold back a little bit. And then after a while, I was just like, nah, screw it. I'll just share everything I, share everything I got. And it turned, it turned out to be the best decision I had made, which is just keep being myself and keep doing that. Um, cause when I do try to change and it was pretty funny because I was just like, oh, I, I need to have this on my website. You know, that's what everybody's doing with their launches and blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, screw it. Like, yeah. no, I'm not doing it that way. I'm doing it my way. Because even the way I launch, I don't launch how people typically do. Yeah. So um, I, I think just my biggest lesson has been just keep staying with myself. Because when I do things that aren't myself, I can tell. My audience can tell. The vibe is just not right. Things don't work out right. I don't make as many sales. You know, so, you know, it, it's, it's pretty obvious when I'm doing something that's not myself. And so I, I now know just stick to me and, and that's what works. But you seem to be everywhere. I mean, Facebook, Periscope, Instagram, <laughs> uh, Pinterest. Yeah. How do we need to be everywhere? Or is no, we don't need to be. Um, I mean, I have presence on a lot of different platforms, but I don't spend a lot of time heavily on most of them. I mean, Facebook is where I spend majority of my time because that's where my audience hangs out. That's where my Facebook group is, and so that's where I focus. Um, I do spend a lot more time on Twitter nowadays. Um, just because that seems to be like my audience really likes it when I tweet and when I retweet them, they're just like, oh my gosh, can't, they're like obsessed with that. So I was like, okay, cool. Like I'll spend more time here. So sometimes you, you got to just pick one place and just really, really go all in on it. Mm -hmm. I know people where their whole business is wrapped around Instagram or their whole business is wrapped around Pinterest. So it's kind of like you pick one, go for it and then start branching out steadily because you okay. don't need to be everywhere. I mean, I don't have a LinkedIn account. I made a Snapchat account, but I'm deleting it because it just doesn't doesn't fit with what I want to do mm. so you know you don't have to be everywhere you just have to find where your audience is and then stick to it be very consistent and and just go for it what needs to happen in 2016 for this to be your biggest year or best year <sighs> ever? what needs to happen this year 
I don't know. Um, it's kind of interesting because right now I'm about to get into my launch. So it's like so many decisions are going to be based after what happens during this launch. So it's like I'm right like kind of in the thick of it right now. Um, but some of the major things is going to be being able, able to spend a lot more time with my kids. Um, I do get to spend a lot of time with them, but I want to be even more of a mom um, because I am working, you know, over 40 hours a week most weeks on my business and that's okay for now, but you know, now I want to be able to streamline everything a lot more. So I think streamlining my business, having a little bit of things more automated um, is probably the, the biggest thing that I think will just help me and my family. Thank you so much for being here and for sharing your genius. Awesome, well thank you for having me. Yay. You're amazing, thank Yay. you. Det var Kimla Luna. Gå in på grisindning.no slash 35 og lær mer om hva hun er helt fantastisk. Og det jeg bare tar med meg fra denne podcasten, dette intervjuet med denne dama, er at hun deler, deler, deler og deler og deler og deler og deler og deler og deler. Skjønner du hva jeg mener? Hun bare gir. Og det er noe vi alle kan lære ut av. Hva er det du tok med deg? Del gjerne med meg under kommentarfeltet på grisinning.no slash 35 og hør hva er det du tok med deg. Del med oss hva du tok med deg fra denne podcasten. Hei så lenge, og så høres vi i neste uke. Jeg håper du ble superinspirert til å ta nye action etter denne episoden av Grunnekanalen pluss mye mer. Gå nå til grysinning.no og legg gjerne en kommentar på denne episoden om hva du tar med deg. Jeg vil gjerne høre fra deg. Og få mer grunnetrening på skapdindrømmejobb.no Glem heller ikke å abonnere slik at vi treffes neste gang på Grunnekanalen pluss mye mer. Ha en fantastisk dag, så høres vi!